Um, so this is the two year anniversary of, was it the launch or was it just when it became operational? It's the two year anniversary of science operations when we started taking science data and returning it to earth. Cool. Um, so with this being the two year anniversary of the, the James Webb telescope uh, getting into operation and, and sending stuff back to us here on earth, uh, can you tell us a little bit about what we've discovered with this um, amazing piece of technology in that time? So the Webb telescope, we are just getting started really, but in two years to, so far, it's been a flood of discoveries coming back. We have been able to show that uh, the universe, that galaxies in the early universe are bigger, brighter, and have bigger black holes than we expected. We've been able to find more than a thousand galaxies that we are seeing as they looked when the universe was less than a billion years old. So we're seeing back in time to those early times. And we've been able to show what that early universe looked like. That was, that was why the telescope was built. That was the difficult thing that we set for, a uh, task that we set for ourselves. We've also been able to study planets orbiting uh, other stars and to see what their atmospheres have made of, are made of. We've seen, um, uh, not only one or two molecules, but whole chemistry sets going on in these planets where we're seeing, you know, what's the atmospheric composition? What are those planets made of? How do they, how does it work there? Uh, we see planets that look nothing like anything in our own solar system, planets that um, are thousands of degrees hot and there's, you know, there's, there's like lava um, all over, you know, the, the surface is lava for real. Uh, we see planets uh, where we see detailed chemistry going on in the atmosphere that we've never been able to see before. So when, the bigger picture, if we step back, is how rare is the Earth? How rare are solar systems like our own? And what does that tell us about our place in the universe and, and how you make an Earth? If you're, if you're like me, um, it, it, people generally around my age, we, we grew up seeing some of the images that came, I guess you would call it the predecessor, with, with Hubble. Um, how does this compare to what that telescope was capable of? And, um, and, and does this telescope still kind of work in conjunction with some of those other um, space platforms and Earth-based observations? Well, the Webb telescope was designed knowing that Hubble was there. So we focused on things that Webb can't, that, that we focus with Webb on things Hubble can't do. So it sees light that is too red for Hubble and it is a much bigger telescope, so it can go much deeper than, than, um, than Hubble. But Hubble can see light like our eyes can see, uh, bl blue to, you know, to red light, and it can also see further in the ultraviolet. Um, uh, Webb can't do that, right? The, and so they work in, the way to think about it is they work in tandem, um, see, and together give you a much richer picture than either telescope can do by itself. But certainly in terms of depth, and particularly for these very first, these early galaxies, um, Webb is 100 times more sensitive, can see things 100 times fainter than Hubble can. And, and speaking of some of those images, as part of this two-year celebration, you guys uh, released a brand new uh, image today. Can you tell us a little bit of, of, about that image and, and what we're seeing with that? Sure, that's our anniversary card. We have, uh, uh, for a second anniversary, we got two galaxies, a penguin and an egg. That's what it looks like to our eyeballs anyway. Um, what, what's really going on here are two galaxies, not that far away, that are interacting. They're gravitationally, you know, the gravity of each other is pulling on them and it's twisting and warping and distorting that red galaxy. So that looks kind of like a penguin. Um, so, you know, it was a normal spiral galaxy and it's getting unwrapped and twisted. These galaxies are going to spiral around each other and circle and eventually merge and form one larger mass galaxy. That's a common way that galaxies grow over time. We know that our Milky Way did that in the past uh, and we'll do it in the future with the Andromeda galaxy and, uh, you know, not for a while though. Of course, uh, I think everyone likes to share those, those beautiful, um, images that come from these space telescopes. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about um, what would be some of the favorite things that, that you've seen discovered with this platform so far? Well, I'm so excited that we nailed the, high, the, the early universe part. That's why we built the telescope and it's worked so well. You know, we're seeing what the, the baby pictures of the universe just better than we could have expected. And we're getting a much richer view of how it all got started than certainly that we had, but even that I dared hope. 
we're also getting to study how our own solar system works. We've studied the major planets in our own solar system. I've been really excited by the results studying Saturn's moon Enceladus and uh, Jupiter's moon Io, where those are both, we think, icy, icy crusts over liquid oceans. And we're seeing chemicals that are escaping through uh, rifts, through holes in the ice. And so that's pretty neat. We're seeing water from Enceladus and we're seeing, seeing carbon dioxide leak out of certain parts of Io. So that's like a sneak peek of what's going on down there in those hidden oceans. I'm sorry, Europa, not Io. It's been a long day, sorry. <laughs> Io is a volcanic world that you wanna visit. Europa has a liquid water ocean, sorry. <laughs> like you were saying earlier, we, we, we love to see those those um, sort of picturesque photos that come from these telescopes. I mean, that. That's just kind of the the eye candy of what these things can do. Can you tell us a little bit more about what we're finding out scientifically and what some of your favorite findings sure. are? Sure. So the images are gorgeous. And they're gorgeous because they have a lot of information. And scientists use that information. You know, we're we're seeing um, you know, there, there's it's not just eye candy, there's there's real information about what's going on with the stars and the gas. But what the telescope also does and spends actually most of its time doing, even though it's not as flashy, is figuring out what all these things are made of. And that's by getting spectra, little rainbows of everything that we're looking at. So that's how we are figuring out what stuff's made of, how we get the atmospheric composition of planets, of their atmospheres, and how we figure out exactly how far away these distant galaxies are. We also figure out how much carbon and oxygen and nitrogen these galaxies have managed to build up and what molecules these, uh, these planets have inside them. So that's something where, you know, it's really where we've gone from, oh, we can find a thing to, oh, I know what that thing is made of. And then I can compare it to other things and see how it's evolved with time. It's incredibly rich. Um, when it comes to the, the lifespan of this telescope, obviously there's, there's lots of missions that you guys are working on. You said you really wanted to see back in time, back those earliest stages of the universe. Um, what are some other missions that we're, we're hoping to uh, use this telescope for? And, and I know with, with many space platforms, you have your, your primaries and then you've got your bucket of like, would like to, if, if the mission gets that far, what are some of those things that we are, we're hoping to get in this uh, lifetime? And a mission like Webb, you know, took 20,000 people and many years. And so you have to, you have to plan what's next as you're uh, just seeing the benefits of, of the current big thing. So for next up for NASA is uh, NASA's Roman mission. Roman is a telescope that's like a stubby Hubble that will look at large pieces of the sky at once, a much bigger, uh, a much bigger uh, part of the sky than Hubble. Uh, so Roman is going to be surveying the sky to study planets and also to understand this mysterious dark energy and dark matter that we don't know what it is, but it dominates most of what's out there. Roman's launching in a couple of years. After that, we want to build a telescope uh, called the Habitable Worlds Observatory to study dozens of Earth-like planets around sun-like stars and figure out, you know, are we alone? Are there, is there life on other planets? And then also to do all of the kinds of transformative science that we've gotten used to with Hubble and with Webb. And obviously as we get those other platforms into space, there's lots of more discoveries um, that will be added to this. Um, what, what's next for uh, the, the Webb telescope? What, what's the, uh, I guess the next couple of years look like for, for missions for that platform? Well, you can you can actually go online and see what we're observing today. We publish our daily schedule and we bounce around the sky. We'll study quasars for a couple hours and then we'll go look at a comet and then we'll go look off to the distant, you know, very distant galaxies. Um, we are executing our third year of science. That is science that was selected by asking the world, what is the most important science that we ought to be doing? And then having a competition and peer review. We had a year of telescope time to get away, uh, to give away. We got nine years of ideas. So this is the most competitive, hard to get time on telescope in the world because we want, we have the best ideas. So we're gonna be studying, um, I, I'm so excited for some of, the, uh, some of the programs that have just started executing from doing surveys of really looking at these distant galaxies and really honing in on what's going in, what happened in that first billion years um, to studying uh, planets and and stars in our own backyard. Cool. And as we're wrapping up here, um, 
with our time, um, you mentioned you can go online to find more information about that. What, where should uh, people go to uh, keep tabs with you guys? So on the web, nasa.gov slash web with two Bs, and then on all the social medias at NASA web. Awesome. I appreciate you taking a little bit of time to talk to me today. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Take care. You too.